Hi again, everyone. Here we are asked to evaluate the following definite integral via the so-called Leibniz rule. Now, let's first of all, let's see what, what we're given. This integral is actually, you can think of it as a function of alpha. Okay? Now, x here is known as the dummy variable. Okay? It's, this is not a function of x. All right, the x disappears if you could do the integration directly. All right. Um, secondly, notice that this is a very difficult integral. It, it, it's very hard to integrate this directly, to find an antiderivative and then to just uh, solve the problem. So what we're going to do is apply Leibniz rule, which actually involves differentiating integrals. So how do we do it? Well, the basic idea is to calculate the derivative of what we're given and then hopefully it will be very easy to solve uh, through integration. Okay, so let's differentiate both sides of our given expression. All right. Okay, so. In the next step, we're going to apply Leibniz rule. Now, Leibniz rule says I can push this d d alpha inside the integral sign, and I just change these straight d's to curly d. So we're calculating a partial derivative here. Why do we do that? Well, this is a function of two variables, x and alpha. So from here to here, we've pushed in the d d alpha and changed the d's to the straight d's to curly d's. Okay. All right. So now we're faced with taking the partial derivative of x to the alpha minus one all over log x. Now it looks easy, but Remember, we're differentiating with respect to alpha here, not x. Okay, that's an important thing to, to remember here. So to differentiate x to the alpha with respect to alpha, you'll get the following. This is the derivative of x to the alpha the partial derivative of x to the alpha with respect to alpha. Okay? Now, of course, the partial derivative of 1 is just 0, and this log x, we still need to divide by that. Okay? So now you can cancel off the log x's, and you're left with. this simple expression. Now, because alpha is greater than negative 1, I'll get something like the following. And, oh, sorry. And then substitution. Substitution in here for x equals 1 and 0 just gives you 1 on alpha plus 1. Okay, so what do we have now? We have i dash of alpha equals 1 on alpha plus 1. So what we can do now, we can integrate both sides here and here with respect to alpha and then we can form hopefully i.
Okay, so if I integrate here and here, integrating with respect to alpha. Now, the integral here is just log of alpha plus 1. Now, I don't need the absolute value signs there because alpha is greater than minus 1. And I can't forget here a constant of integration. I'm going to denote that by c. So we've almost got i of, I of alpha, which is the thing we wanted. We just need to calculate this constant of integration. Can we determine it? Well, the answer is yes. If we go up here and sub in, say, alpha equals 0, um, I'm going to denote this by uh, star. Okay. From star, see that if I sub in alpha equals 0, this will be 1. 1 minus 1, 0. Integrating 0, I get 0. Now if I go down here and I substitute alpha equals 0 down here, I get log 1 plus c. I'm going to call that double star. So I get log 1 plus c at alpha equals 0, which is just c. So from this equation, i of 0 equals 0, i of 0 equals c. Combining, we must have c equals 0. So our i of alpha is just log alpha plus 1. OK? So we differentiated our given information, solved the resulting differential equation, and calculated the constant of integration at the end. Leibniz rule is a fantastic method for computing very difficult integrals like this and much more difficult than, than this particular one. You can do some horrendous integrals with uh, Leibniz rule very easily.